Hello there. This is Elena in my channel enough. Uh, today we have very interesting topic. Russian ex-wife to die for. And I will tell about a little bit about Russian women and and a little bit about Russian men and not only Russian men but men from other countries. Uh, it's not gonna be like uh, some Western women complaining about their men, but I will complain a little bit. But you will clearly see the difference between Russian men and a foreign men, and why Russian women may be angry about uh, something with them. Uh, as a Soviet woman and Russian woman in the past, and now I'm Canadian woman, so I can compare two worlds and see how it is in different countries. Uh, first of all, in USSR and Russia in 90s or a little bit before that, yeah, yeah, theoretically speaking, women had rights and so on, but yeah, they could be like uh, the cosmonaut or astronaut, Russian astronaut, Valentina Tereshkova, which is basically a female version, a woman version of the first dogs R Soviet Union sent into space. The name of the names of the dogs were Belka and Strelka. They also were female dogs, by the way. And um, so, basically, like a dog, they sent first men into space, or first woman into space, and even trying to marry uh, Miss Tereshkova to, I think, Andrea Nikolaev, to have a space wedding and stuff like that. Basically, it's like if you send a couple dogs, male and female, into space and see how they're gonna multiply there or something. So, nobody really care about women's rights, even, uh, yeah, yeah, USSR was supposed to be so pro-women and everybody equal, good luck with that idea. I'll make another video about that and say that basically USSR never was communist or socialist country, as some trolls writing to me, English speaking by the trolls, by the way, this wasn't true. Nevertheless, so, yeah, theoretically on the paper, Russians has a constitution, Russians has a laws, and Soviet people, which was 15, 15 republics, was consists, um, combined together, was creating USSR. Uh, Ukraine was one of the republics, Russia was another republic, and so on. But, in fact, Russia basically ruled everybody. As a, a USSR was an empire and a little bit of a cult. But today we're talking about women, not about, and from my personal experience and so on. Um, even little girls in school, we were celebrating uh, International Women's Day on March the 8th, when all the boys we study with and in the class was supposed to bring us little gifts and flowers, and one time in the year celebrating Russian women. And so is Russian men, they will show up at home with the flowers and the candy and so on. And on 23rd of February, which is the Red Army Day, it kind of was men's day, and all the women was, and girls in school were supposed to bring little gifts to the boys and men. Uh, but uh, despite the uh, information in the law saying that you can't really fire pregnant women and their rights are protected, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. Rights are protected, kind of. But, and there is a law. There was, anyways at the time in USSR and in Russia, but uh, in fact, I experienced myself and so many other Russian women, especially the young ladies right after university coming to find a job, and the first thing they hear from uh, the employer would be, oh, woman, okay, two years, no marriages, no children. If you can promise that, then yeah, maybe. And to get some decent job, which in my time it was considered like job in the bank or something like that, or be a chief of the department of some sort. Um, it was perestroika time and uh, many companies wasn't paid and banks was considered a good place to work because they paid on time and they had high salaries and so on. So, um, uh, you find a job and um, and you 
have a condition, so you shouldn't get married for a couple years or have children, because then they have to pay your maternity leave and so on. Nobody ever heard at the time that men actually could have rights to sit with a child uh, at home while his wife is working. And um, it was also always kind of a woman supposed to do that. Men didn't even have a right to do that. So, of course, nobody could enforce or enforce that, even if you promise, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm not going to get married in two years, for a couple years and wouldn't have children and so on. Uh, you can say, yeah, 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 and then you, oops, get married and have a child. So that is possible. Before my time in the earlier years of USSR, before I was born, and so it was like 30s, 40s, 60s, 50s, um, it considered in Russia, uh, if you if you sleeping with a man before the, uh, the wedding and you're not married, it considered the woman is a kind of prostitute, and it was a huge shame for the family. Some parents would refuse the girl, especially if she gets pregnant. Oh boy, they could just throw her on the street because she's a shame for the family, and many women kill themselves, drown themselves in the rivers and so on, just because of that. Because some guy promised her marriage and this and that, and then, oops. And it's a real fact, it's not a fairy tale or anything. Another horrible thing, here's to you, the abortion people who likes to discuss abortions and so on. That is why that topic has pissed me right off. Because so many women in Russia died from criminal abortions. Some of them are married, and not because they have a child from the different men, not their husband, no. Because Soviet Union women and people were poor, they couldn't afford many children. And good luck telling Russian men that mm, no fun today, tonight. Uh, Soviet Union needs soldiers, so there was no condoms in, um, in the stores or pharmacies, period. There was simply no such a thing. So, good luck with contraception and so on. It was before my time, of course. When I was a grown woman, it all was in the past. But even in USSR, I remember the time when they were buying condoms in some other countries by bunches and many people made business out of it, bringing them to Russia, because you simply couldn't buy it. And abortions were forbidden in USSR in the Stalin time and uh, little later and little later after that. So, here's to the doctors who ga gave an oath, Hippocratic oath, to help their patients. Could throw, Russian doctors throw it in the garbage. Why? Because they could get arrested if they help women to get rid of a unwanted pregnancy. And sometimes it was health conditions, sometimes it was rape. So, the doctor simply didn't do it. They wasn't allowed to, and some pe some doctors try to help women, kind of underground, basically. And then some wasn't even doctors. All of that was done on the kitchen table somewhere in a dirty environment by some old woman. And you have no idea, and neither do I, how many women in Russia died from criminal abortions. A lot. They were tortured, basically, and murdered. And when somebody uh, uh, bring a dying woman or a wounded woman to the hospital, uh, Stalin doctors were saying, hmm, tell us who did it to you, or we're not gonna help you. And they didn't. Unless you betray the person who actually tried to help you in that kind of situation, which you know that they would be arrested and thrown in jail for that, uh, they literally didn't help them. That's what happens when stuff like that get decided by the law of the country. But, thank goodness it wasn't my case in any way, and uh, I never needed it. So, and in the, in, in the time when I was a grown woman, it wasn't the case anymore. Women had abortions. They could have it in a decent clinic with anesthetic, because in many times they didn't even have anesthetics, because they're thinking you're a criminal, you're a bad guy, you have to be punished. So if 
the doctors decided to help you and do that later on after it was legal started to uh, it became legal they still punish you by that kind of cruelty cruelty so every time government stick its nose into woman's body and bathroom and bedroom that's what happens people die women die and now Putin needs soldiers again guess what gonna happen soon gonna condoms disappeared and all the traditional values gotta be brought up tell me about that how many Russian men cheated on Russian women and it was considered normal Russian women would tell me huh well yeah my husband is cheating but he's a man what do you expect from those cheating bastards you don't well they can't warn it out could he so he will be back to family and yeah yeah he cheating bastard well well what you gonna do he's a man that's what I hear in Russia in Canada and in any civilized country absolutely different stories women here are on a the horse they have rights even more than men and good luck trying to cheat on Canadian woman she will throw you out of the house with a uh, in your dirty socks uh, ripped off and uh, maybe you, sh you can keep your underwear because yes woman rights protected and all that blah 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 about traditional values nowadays Putin and Lavrov and many other men in Russia cheating they have officially second families and hiding money abroad and so on having couple families god I gonna cry how traditional values their traditional values are just unbelievable that hypocrisy is really annoying but return back to the to the job application so you came to work and you start working and uh, I personally could say Russian men are quite uh, romantic before they marry you anyway and they could bring you flowers and say congratulations with International Women's Day and there are lots of good men in Russia the problem is there are not many of them I mean men in general not good men so people marry early considered like for Western standards Russian standards um, not so much I married around I guess 19 it was considered a eh, oldish kinda and um, so if you're not married early all the decent men are married and unless you want to cheat uh, spend time as cheating bastard then then you're out of options it's partly that's why I married a foreigner because it was my second marriage and never regret it by the way and I have really high respect for Canadian men and American because here in the free world it's considered bad to cheat on your spouses people wouldn't shake your hand you will be pariah I in Russia well there are jokes going around about cheating men and uh, some wives know about it they don't have too much choice because many of them living in small apartment which you can't break into two apartments and so on so sometimes people even after divorce keep living together because they just simply can't afford separate uh, housing and talking about USSR women didn't have rights to become any high level of official that is why I was so impressed when in 70s one of the most conservative parties of most conservative country of Great Britain elected Margaret Thatcher as a prime minister and she was prime minister for two decades and in Russia where did you see woman a leader of the country never yeah yeah there was Furtseva the minister of culture that's about it as high as it gets and now that Matvienka garbage of a woman who was supporting the war in Donbass and didn't allow peacekeepers from United Nations to come and stop that war in Ukraine which Russia started and supported all those bandits that's about it and the Tereshkova is the 
cosmonaut or astronaut, as the foreigners would say. That's about it. Because on the paper Russian women has rights, and in real life they don't. But guess what? Putin gave, gave Russian women an excellent source of revenge right now. With his mobilization, many, well, some Russian women, ex-wives, which divorced some bastards. Why I say that? Because normally Russian women are family-oriented and decent people. And they don't divorce the guy just because, oh, I'm getting bored with him. They divorce for serious reasons, like cheating, like beating her up, like stuff like that. They're not gonna get divorced just because, oh, I don't feel like it today. And um, guess what happened when Putin proclaimed mobilization to the army right now in going to the war in Ukraine? A few Russian women finally get the uh, chance for revenge. And they really provide all the information to the mobilization recruiting office offices where their ex-husbands are. So they get drafted and could get killed in Ukraine. So don't piss off Russian women. The revenge may be, may be sweet to them right now in Russia. Well, if to talk about me personally, no, I didn't betray my ex-husband. On the contrary, I called him and me and my Canadian husband offered him help and support and money, which he didn't go for it, but he had a choice. We actually warned him about what happening and uh, I told him to save his life and don't become a cannon fodder in Russian-Ukrainian war. But not every Russian woman, woman is as tolerant as me. Even I had my issues with my ex-husband, but not that issues that I wanted him dead anyways. And um, that's what I wanted to tell you about USSR and Russian women and Russia. And even now, like, to become somebody, to get some sort of a position with the same education, Russian woman supposed to prove that she's 10 times better than a man to get hired on the same position. Why? The same thing. She's a woman, she will get pregnant, and sh then you have to pay her for a couple years or three years of maternity leave. Now, maybe situation a little bit changing because apparently Russian men also could, could be with a child at home. So maybe nowadays Russian women get a little bit uh, more options. So if you have uh, information about that, please write to me in the comments. Uh, eventually they will be published. Um, the comments going through moderation, so so I need time to to see them and decide which would be published. Oh, and that on the picture is Putin. Uh, a macho man, the dream of every Russian woman. Ha ha ha. I don't think so. Russian women know better than to admire Putin that much, but maybe there would be f a few who will decide it's a good idea to date Putin. And apparently Alina Kabaeva thinks so. And he managed to marry it once before that. So, not like he completely, completely <laughs> undesirable for anybody at all, which would make sense, but probably because because his high position, there are some women who still thinking he's that little piece of nothing, a uh, little attractive t uh, um, to someone. Obviously, I guess you can't argue about, like Russians say, don't argue about taste and color. Somebody like one color, somebody like another. So it's probably there are some people, or well, uh, women who love Putin, and I heard of some. And even no one, well, she likes him not as a man, obviously. So anyways, uh, if some men uh, wanted to know is Russian women are really that good looking, many of them are. And in Russia it's considered appropriate to dress up all the time, because partly for the job, 
it's uh, mandatory. You can show up at your work with flip flops and shorts. Uh, you have to dress up every day. And many Russian women competing for men, that's, there are not enough of them for everybody, so they really put attention to how they look and put makeup on and dress up and, and so on. This is considered normal in Russia and everybody do that. So yeah, there are some women now in military and this and that, so lots of, lots of women. And many of them very traditionally oriented and they do want family and they do want children, but some of them don't. Nowadays there are women who can afford to be on their own. Before in Russia they just couldn't afford it, like one person hardly cannot support yourself. And if you decided to have a child without marriage, in Russia first of all it would be a terrible idea because everybody would point fingers at you and say you're a prostitute. Since you haven't even been married and you have a child, oh boy, how awful is that? This is wrong. I'm not saying it's good, I'm saying you how it is. This is what happening in Russia. And happened, and still sometimes happening. Some older women would, women would treat her badly. And the worst part is just not, it's not because men thinking women should be that way. Women thinking that too. And if you're trying to be different and say, no, I don't like that my husband cheating on me, and I'm not gonna tolerate it, your girlfriends would say, well, what are you stupid, all men are the same, what's the point, at least this one is good at this or that, or he's nice to you, or he's making money, and they all exactly the same. Right now, living in Canada for over 18 years, I find out it's not true. There are countries where are actually made for women, and there are good men who really really good people. They don't cheat. They love you and they love your child and they or your child from previous marriage exactly the same as your child from marriage with this guy and they do know how to help you, how to support the family. Many Canadian men are cooking, many Canadian men are great husbands and so is Americans and basically we are lucky to have them and many women do appreciate them, like I have lots of friends, my girlfriends happily married, all of them, and nobody ever say, oh how horrible my husband is and so on, because they are decent people, and women here have rights, and so should you. So that's what my information about Russian women and men. And that's the difference between Russian men and foreign men. I may make a few more videos about that if you will be interested and let me know about that. But this is how it is. Thank you for your attention and have a great day.